Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This is the Chopping It Up Show, brought to you by the Marching Podcast and Blog Talk Radio. I'm your official Marching Podcast announcer, David Thompson, and here's your host, the Phantom Podcaster himself, Joe Beard. Good evening and welcome to Chopping It Up. I am your host, Joe Beard, and happy to be of service for you tonight. Tonight is September 24th, 2013, 6 o'clock on the West Coast and 9 o'clock on the East Coast. We appreciate all those listening live and or those listening in podcast form, whether through iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, or through our website. At the end of this broadcast, If you decide you like the show, then we appreciate a donation to the network, if you feel so in your heart, of course. Just simply go to themarchingpodcast.com and click on the donate button to help improve the show and help build our scholarship fund. Well, we are in the month of September, and like I said, it's a celebration this month. For one, we are in full swing of marching band season. Make sure to go to our website and vote for our week four matchup. It is Livingstone College versus Edward Warner College. I understand that this matchup between the bands actually did not happen, but if they did, go ahead and please vote there on the website. I'll read the results on the 90 Degree Show this Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. We are in the last week of this celebration this month, and it has been a great month. Tomorrow we will have... The That's What I'm Talking About show, our talk show here on the Marching Podcast Network, and they have a really good topic. The title is called, What Did You Just Call Me? And they will be discussing if minorities are sensitive to criticism from other people, respective uh, to the group to the group that they claim. It's an interesting talk, so check that out tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern here on the Marching Podcast Network. Happy birthday to the blog, the Marching Blog, the Marching Blogcast. Please go to our blog address, blog the number four dot the Marching Podcast dot com, and enter your address to follow our blog. Now tonight we will wrap it up this month with chopping it up. We will talk to someone special, and that is Mr. Curtis Luckis Jr. Curtis is the head band director at the Great Callaway High School in Jackson, Mississippi. I marched with Curtis in the band, uh, and he played trumpet along with me. I believe Curtis was, uh, I think, yeah, he played played along with me. Yeah, I remember, yeah, played along with me in the same part. I think we played both played first part, but I remember, yes, I'm just trying to recall that in my head. But Curtis and his class came after us in 1998. Uh, We were the class of 97, and uh, 98 was a tough group. Curtis was a very good player, a really good player, and it's great to see him grown and, and a leader of a major program there in the Jackson area. Our announcer, David Thompson, went to Callaway back in the day. I think he graduated in 89, or like 87, one of the two, something like that. And I remember him always talking about Mr. Mitchell, you know, Mr. Mitchell, and you know how now, someday, you know, later on in the future, someday people people or, you know, kids are going to be talking about Curtis, just like, you know, David talks about Mr. Mitchell. So we're excited to chop it up with uh, the young Trump Funk tonight. This will be a podcast, but we will accept your calls at 718-664-6025. You can email the show at marchingpodcast at gmail.com. Tweet us at Marching Podcast or follow our blog, blog the number four dot the marching podcast dot com. And check out our website and we would like to hear from our sponsors. Tonight's show is brought to you by Liquid Effects Photography, Block Band Music, Bandhead.org, Big Deal Fundraising, and HBCU News dot net. Let's take the time to hear from them now. Block Band is a minority-owned music business that you can think of as your assistant band director. We help grow your musicians with a great selection of traditional concert band music. Then we back up their performance with necessities like reeds, oil, drum heads, drumsticks, and mallets. Finally, we outfit your players in auxiliary and shoes, spats, and gloves that match our precise custom drills. Got band? If so, then Block Band's got you. 
Check BlockBandMusic.com or call us at 919-698-2560. That's BlockBandMusic.com, 919-698-2560. Attention high school directors and alumni. Does your band need to raise money to travel, buy instruments, or uniforms? Are you looking to raise money to help your band? Well, Big Deal Fundraising is rapidly becoming one of the largest distributors of fundraising products in the industry. Big Deal is based in New York City and ships anywhere in the United States. Offering quality products, fast delivery, and innovative consultation that will help you meet your fundraising goals. Call today at 855-244-4430 or visit us at BigDealFundraisingUSA.com. Big Deal Fundraising, your fundraising partner for your band or music ensemble. What if there was a Facebook for bands? Wait a minute, there is. Bandhead.org. Bandhead.org is a social network for HBCU show bands. You can create your own profile and post videos, photos, and comments on Bandhead.org. Need somewhere to post events, audition schedules, job postings? Check out Bandhead.org. Are you recruiting for talent? Go to Bandhead.org. And coming this fall, HBCUBands.com. Write that down, HBCUBands.com. Do you know where to find scholarship information and other financial resources that are available to HBCU students? Are you up to date on the latest information in the HBCU world? If you answer no to any of these questions, then HBCU News with the Reads is the place for you. We provide information to spark interest, success stories of graduates, and the latest on issues that you care about. So check out HBCU News with the Reads, Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern on blogtalkradio.com forward slash marching podcast. Check out our website and point your browser toward hbcunews.net and join in on the calls and discussion today. Having an anniversary party, birthday party, or better yet, you're about to marry that special someone? Liquid Effects Photography is the perfect choice to immortalize all your most special moments. With 10 years of dependable professional service that can deliver from the conventional to the best in cutting-edge technology and creativity. Come experience the uniqueness of Liquid Effects Photography. We serve the entire Upper Midwest and will travel further upon request. Come check us out at liquideffects.com. That's L-I-Q-U-I-D-E-F-F-E-X.com. Or call us at 773-454-5556. That's 773-454-5556. All right, we're back, and we're ready to chop it up with Curtis. Like I said, uh, you can uh, call and on the number that you see there on your screen, 718-664-6025. We'll take those calls um, at the conclusion of the interview. So now, without further ado, Mr. Curtis Luckett, Jr., You're now here in the Marching Podcast, and we're here now with Curtis Luckett. What's going on, Curtis? Uh, everything's cool, man. All right. Well, we appreciate your time today and, um, you know, really proud of you and what you're doing. I always knew that you were, you know, destined for big things and uh, outstanding trumpet player in your own right. So let's go ahead and get into it, man. Curtis, where are you from? I'm from Jackson, Mississippi, born and raised. Okay, now are your folks and all of them uh, from Jackson too? Actually, uh, they're from from Canton, Canton, Mississippi. That's about fifteen, maybe sixteen miles up north from Jackson. But um, they all moved down here after they um, graduated from high school up there and everything, and they just came down and made a better life for them and for us and. That's that's about it for my family. <laughs> that's cool, man. That's outstanding. That's always it's always good to hear. So now you grew up in Jackson. Now where did you go to high school there? I actually went to high school at Callaway, Callaway High School, nineteen ninety eight graduate. Okay, that's outstanding. Uh, cause, uh, you know, I know that uh, my cousin, and you know, cause you know, my family's from Jackson, and I had a couple of cousins that went to Cal. Well, well more than that. Uh, probably like five or six, um, a lot of beards uh, from the Beard family were at uh, Callaway High School. Um, I know, like I know, you know my cousin David. He's the uh, official announcer voice for the network. He went to Callaway, and yeah. Um, yeah. a couple of my other cousins. I, I can't get into them all, but that's what's up, man. Now, now, did you march in the band when you were in high school? 
I did. I had to, man. That was my passion. I had to do it. If I didn't do it, I wouldn't have felt right. <laughs> right. So, so now, now, where did you play? I played the trumpet. Okay. Okay. Played the trumpet. Outstanding. Now, when did you graduate from uh, from Callaway? I graduated from Callaway in 1998. Okay, and then of course I later met you that that fall semester, fall 98. At Jackson State, marching Correct. in the sonic boom of the South. Um, Correct. What made you pick Jackson State? Well, that was all I knew, man. Um, when I saw Jackson State, the first time I really noticed them was, um, I want to say, my fourth grade year. Um, I really didn't know anything about playing an instrument, but I knew that I liked music. I loved music, as a matter of fact. And the first time I saw them, um, I saw him at a parade, and um, I was like, I was asking my mom and dad, I'm like, what's that? Who's that? And I was like, well, that's Jackson State. That's the sign of Boom of the South. And so I started watching them, and the thing that really got me was when I was in fifth grade, when I saw the band on the Motown special on CBS, I was glued to the TV, and I knew from then on that there was no other band that I could be a part of other than the sign of Boom. That was it. Yeah, man, that's that's deep. That you say that because I think that was, I think that was the scale point for me too, man. You know, I, uh, you know, my dad went to Jackson State, and I guess what was that the ninety nineteen ninety band? Yeah, it was like it was like the spring of it was like the spring of ninety one, as a matter of fact, because from what I was told from um, Mr. Taylor, the legendary Mr. Dow Taylor, he told me that they actually um, picked the band before the actual taping. The taping was in the spring, but they picked the band during the fall semester. So uh, they had everything together for that. So, yeah, it was in the spring. It was in that spring of 91. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that was that that was a, a great, that was an all-time performance. That's going to go down in the annals of history. You know, uh, you know, I know when I saw it, you know, all the way in St. Louis, I knew myself that I was probably going to Jackson State, you know, and I mean, it was a it was an unbelievable amount of pride. I felt the same way. I think maybe two thousand two. It wasn't the same yeah. same, but two thousand two they went to um, California and did the 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 S the Image Awards. I think. Yeah, it was. Image yeah, and they marched down the aisle. I, you know, I felt I felt pretty proud about that too. Um, but but yeah, Jackson State has you know they've been known for those great performances. So so it's cool that you know you and I were on that same accord. So uh, when you marched and you got there in 1998, now uh, what would you say was your most memorable experience when you were there marching at Jackson State? I would have to say marching in my section. I mean, my section was hands down the best section to ever come across a trumpet as far as the section goes. I mean, you know, I, I came across some, some guys, you know, such as yourself and other guys that, that really understood the craft of playing the trumpet. And when we all came together, we made a lot of things happen. And uh, that was what, so, that's what really got to me about this section. So I have to say my trumpet section. That's cool, man, because, um, yeah, we, we were pretty tight. Um, and, and not talk about as far as like our playing wise, but just as we were a close knit group, um, you know, Trump Funk. I mean, it's just how it is. It's just how we are. But definitely back then, Royal Order, baby, Royal Order. Yeah, I mean, and the I Royal just Order. I just remember definitely back then. I mean, we, we had fun. You know, the the Trump Funk yeah. picnics and all the stuff that that we did together. We had a good time. So that's great, man. So what was your major there when you were at Jackson State? I actually majored in music education. Okay. I made it in physical education, yes. Sir. So so you you kind of were already, you had the mindset already that you knew that you were going to work in that field? Well, honestly, before I before that became my major, I always, I used to draw a lot. So I used to really love drawing. I would look at cars and stuff and pictures and stuff, and I'd draw it. And then <clears throat> my first, my first um, thought about, Major in there was um, graphic design. Well, I wanted to design cars, but then I found out about all that math, and I'm not the best at math. I can <laughs> I can add, subtract, multiply, and divide, but when it comes to other things, I don't think I can do it. So I really had to. I prayed about it, 
and I thought about it, and I was like, well, the most important, but the main thing that I'm really, I really love is music. So I feel like, well, maybe this could be something that could be beneficial to me. So I ended up majoring in music education, and the rest, as they say, is history. That's outstanding, man. Um, that's funny because I, I didn't know that you were into draft, and I always, always just assume that you were into music. Um, just because, you know, you were a really good player and, and you memorized the songs really fast, too, that first year. You know, that was really important, too, because amidst of all of everything that's going on, you know, you got to memorize your music, you know. And uh, I remember yeah. you did that really well. So it's just I automatically assumed that you were in music. So that's great, man. So um, when did you finish Jackson State? I actually finished in 2006. Um, I kind of got you know, sidetrack with having to deal with, you know, certain things, you know, work and things of that nature. But I, I took it upon myself to uh, really finish what I started. I'm the type of person I'm not going to stop, you know. I've always been told not to quit. So uh, I decided to uh, just keep going on in this thing, and I finished in 2006. And um, now um, I'm a band director here in Jackson right now. Okay, that's cool, man. So uh, you were laying down the tracks at all that time, and so now you're uh, a band director there. What um, high school are you uh, a band director for? I'm actually at my alma mater, believe it or not. I'm the band director at Callaway High School. Okay, that's cool, man. So you, I guess you came full circle, as they say. You started started there. How did that come uh, come to be, come into existence? I just believe in divine intervention, man. Um, the band director at the time, Mr. Joe Mitchell, shout out to him. Um, he was like my my second granddad. Um, everything I learned, I learned from him. And um, it just got down to the point to where, you know, he was he was ready to retire. And he was, he was thinking of a person that, or, you know, just anyone that could possibly, you know, keep the tradition of what he taught at Callaway going. And um, I was going up there a lot, even while I was at Jackson State, even while we were marching the band together, you and me. I was going up there. I was going back to the school a lot just to give back to them, you know, um, try to work with the trumpet players, give them some, some technical studies and things like that to make them better. And I, I just kept going up there. And, and then I just I just decided that this would be a good place for me. And... One day he just called me. I was actually um, I was actually teaching a middle school band at the time, and he actually called me and he was like, um, "Curtis, I'm about to give it up. So, uh, you know, come talk to me." So then when I went to talk to him, he directed me straight to the principal of the school and he said, "I'm about to retire. This is the man I want to take my spot." Wow. And that was it, just like that, man. So you know, I consider it a blessing. You know, had it not been for him, I wouldn't be here. So, you know, like I said, I consider that a major blessing. Yeah, and shout out to Mr. Mitchell. I believe that uh, my cousin Dave, David Thompson, you know, he's the uh, the, uh, the the resident, you know, official marching podcast voice that, you know, does the commercials and the announcements. Uh, he went to Callaway High School, and <clears throat> I believe him talk, he said things about Mr. Mitchell and, my other cousin's Natalie Beard. She she lives out there in Orlando, Orlando, Florida. She went to Callaway, and she talked about Mr. Mitchell. So that name for anybody associated with Callaway is always and held up in high regards. So definitely shout out to him because every time I talk to someone from Callaway, his name like it ends up like floating up somewhere. Does he? Is he now? He's retired. I guess does he still kind of see the band and check you guys out from time to time? He comes um, very seldom. You know, he's uh, really getting into his retirement. You know, he's trying to relax and and you know get the rest that he deserves. So he doesn't come as much. But um, we talk from time to time on the phone, and he gives me words of advice, and I always um, invite him to certain things that we have going on, like uh, we have like our, our all-city performance, which is the top students in the city, and I always make sure that he comes to things like that, you know, just to see that his students are still moving moving forward and how the program is going to continue to move, 
you know, while he's not there. So, yeah, he, he comes around a lot. Well, that's what's up, man. Now, now was this your first job? Um, well, I know you said that you were helping out um, the students, you know, looking out for them. Was this your first job in your music field? No, it wasn't. Uh, I've been teaching. This will be my this will be my seventh year. I've been teaching. Yeah, this will be my seventh year. I um, I started out in middle school, so I was teaching in middle school for all those years up until this past year. I became band director at uh, Callaway. So I've only been there for a year. This will be my second year coming up. But uh, before then, I was teaching in middle school. So I was pretty much, you know, preparing myself. And, you know, the main thing, it was all about the kids, you know, preparing them for, for greatness as they move on from middle school to high school and on to college. So that's where I got my start, in middle school. Okay, okay. Now, what would you say is your most difficult challenge as being a high school band director? Um, I think my biggest challenge would probably be um, dealing with, you know, different things that all the students are involved in. I mean, you know, when you're in high school, you have so many things that you want to try to do. I have, I have certain, I have athletes, you know, I have, like some of the top track stars, I have uh, I have some of the top baseball players and things like that. So those are some of the things that you know you don't want to you don't want to stop a, a student from doing some of the things that they really like to do because you know I'm, I'm a firm believer in you know whatever it's going to take for you to get a scholarship to college, do what you have to mm-hmm. do. But I always tell them that you know at the end of the day. You can get you a scholarship quicker with playing that horn or playing that drum than you can throwing that basketball, shooting that basketball or throwing that baseball. So I always make sure that they know that. Mm-hmm. But I think that's the most, I think that's the most, the biggest challenge that I have. Okay. Now, what would you say is, uh, I guess, your greatest reward or what's, uh, what's something that always keeps you going back to work every day? My greatest reward, man, is when I see a student that came from nothing and they end up becoming one of the best players that you could possibly hear or you see a student that you would never think would even attempt to go to college. And because they have played and they have practiced and they've done all that they can do, they get them a full scholarship to a college where they don't, where their parents don't have to pay for anything. All they have to do is go to school and maintain their um, GPA and stay in the band and do things like that. That's what motivates me to stay and keep doing what I'm doing because I feel like I'm helping someone help themselves. Mm-hmm. So that's the main thing that keeps me going. That's really cool, man. I know that uh, last year, I talked to another band director out here, uh, Lolita Carter, for um, Dominguez Dominguez High School, and that's mm-hmm. basically exactly what she said. Her greatest her greatest reward is the light bulb coming on, as she said. Like you know, she's able to see someone, uh, you know, she's able to see someone understand or get what's what you know the lesson that they're supposed to learn or what's in front of them, and then they're able to apply that as they go on in their life and. You know, they're able to grow up, and pretty soon, you know, those kids will be like, oh, yeah, Mr. Lucky, man, you know what I'm saying? That's my boy. He helped me, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, that's really cool, and that's kind of how I started this podcast, too, to try to do something for for the kids to, you know, make the world a better place. So you should be commended for that, man. So that that that's great. So I have to ask you, so you guys are, you know, there in Jackson in the heat of a lot of, battles of the bands and all of that stuff like that do you guys would you consider that you guys have like a serious rival there in jackson um a high school rival and also um what was the biggest like battle that you've been involved been involved in since you've been the director there my our our biggest rival has always been Murrah High School. Murrah High School, uh, they're both. We are both on the same side of town, the north side. So Murrah High School has always been Callaway's biggest rival when it comes to um, band or football, anything like that. But as far as 
a big band rival. I believe our biggest band rival has to be Provine High School. Provine High School is um, one of those bands there. Um, they they pretty much they're they're on the same level as us. So it's it's really hard to say who's the best or who's the worst. Uh, I mean, I'm, of course, of course, we're going to say we're the best, but you know, you know, I'm not gonna not gonna you know brag in the team like that, right. but. <laughs> but you know they're our biggest competition because um, they take pride in um, their band just like we do, and um, you know that's why I say they're our biggest band rival. And that's happened a couple of years now because it used to be where um, it would always be Callaway and Murrah, but when Provine came into the picture and started doing more things and people started noticing them, and they it's like they started coming, like they start coming for Callaway. So when they start coming from Calloway, I'm like, we're like, okay. So, you know, that, that's, that's our biggest fan rival. Okay. Okay. So um, what about uh, as far as, like, the battle of the bands that you guys had at the football games? What what would you say was maybe your most intense battle? Or what's the one that you can remember um, in your head and um, since you've been the director? The most intense battle has been, um, like I said, the Callaway Provine game. Um, we pretty much we played the entire game. Um, we went from first quarter to fourth quarter playing against each other. We'll play a song, they'll play a song, they'll play a song, we'll play a song, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So, you know, those are the type of things. That's what you want in a, uh, in a battle, and that's what you want in your program. You want to be able to be challenged. If you're not challenged, then you know you're not, you know you're not reaping the benefits of being that director or being in that band. So that was like the biggest, the biggest thing that we had when we had that battle like that between them this year. Okay, yeah, I was, I was, I was, I probably figured that, but yes, it's definitely the two high schools that I hear the most about. My my dad, he went to Jim Hill. So, you know, he, okay. he tries to, you know, he, he throws his Jim Hill stories out there. But definitely when I was there, and because we were closest to Provine, I always heard about Provine. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Maurice went there, and I had a cousin, another cousin that went there. But I always heard it was, you know, Callaway and Provine. You know, those two schools always kind of jumped out as far as hearing things about bands or whatnot. Um, so, man, I got away from the time. So we're getting close to the end of the interview i want to fit in one more question though and and that's about like recruiting when a kid do the kids come up to you and they just say hey you know mr luck i want to go to you know i want to go to college i don't know where i'm going to go i mean do they and i'm I'm sure that they have guiding counselors or whatnot but i guess does a kid come to you and say like you know that they want to play for a certain program and then, like, do you do you talk to the directors of those schools to help with the kid? Like, how does the recruitment from a high school band director, how, how does that work? Well, basically, um, I myself try to get as much information from the certain schools. I mean, I'm a firm believer in it doesn't matter what school you go to as long as you go to school and you get your scholarship, it doesn't matter. So mainly what I do is I try to make sure that I reach out to all the band directors um, and talk to them and see um, when they're having auditions. Um, I see if they're traveling and hopefully can make sure that they uh, set up time where they can come to Jackson and um, audition our students. And, you know, I make sure that the students are prepared because I try to make sure that every senior, every senior auditions. Whether they are whether they are going to be in the band or not, whether they're going to military or anything like that, I make sure that they audition because you never know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So I make sure that all of my students, and you know, that's the main thing: is make sure that they um, get information, get information from the schools, make sure they understand about um, admissions, financial aid, all those type things. Make sure that uh, make sure that the band directors uh, discuss with them about that. Um, let's see, this past, um, this past November, November of 2012, I actually took a, um, a bus of students, a bus of seniors to Jackson State. They had a, a college day up there and, um, the band program, the music program, 
they had all the students to come in and they started talking to them about Texas State, started talking to them about admissions, financial aid, started talking to them about the band program, about um, all those things, what it would take for you to be a member of the, the boom, all those mm-hmm. type things. So uh, that helped them out a lot. There was a lot of students that probably didn't even think about going to Jackson State or are waiting on band camp in August right now because of that, because they, they feel what they had to do as far as admissions and then for them just seeing it. You know, and that's another thing, too. A lot of the students need to get that opportunity to see the campus and to see the um, the program that they're, that, they're, um, that they're interested in going to or the program that they probably never thought about going to. Um, there was a couple of students um, I took to Valley as well, in Mississippi Valley State. And their band director actually came to our school and auditioned some of our students because some former some former Callaway students are actually were actually at Mississippi Valley, and so they brought him down to um, audition some of the kids. So that's the main thing: just making sure that they they brought their horizon, mm-hmm. so they won't just be in one area. That's the main thing. Wow, that's great, man. Well, that's great. Well, man, it's been great catching up with you. Um, how can we support you and, you know, how can you have any upcoming events or anything that you want the listeners, uh, to, to, uh, <clears throat> to pay attention to, or just all the, the ways that we can support what you're doing in Callaway High School? Man, you can always, um, you can come check us out here in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, we're actually, we start our band camp in July. Um, our first game is August the 23rd um, against Forest Hill High School that's down here. And we're also preparing, um, be on the lookout for the duel at Newell. That's our first um, classic high school. That's our first high school classic game. Where it'll be between Callaway and Murrow. We're going to make that game a classic. And uh, just be looking out for that. Um, you'll be getting information on that forthcoming so um basically just support us man whenever you see that blue and orange callaway high school marching band just know that that's us and we're bringing the funk that's what's up man is it is it's the charger funk is that is that correct that's what it is absolutely the charger <laughs> funk absolutely <laughs> well that's what's up man well well i'm proud of you trump funk and i always knew that you were going to be uh, that you were going to be doing good things, great things, and it's tight to see you back at, you know, your alma mater, uh, where I remember that you came from. Like I said, I saw you talking to my cousin David on Facebook one time, so you know him, and, uh, you know, it's just been really great. Curtis, you were uh, you were also the the crab president, weren't you? But 19... I yeah, you were, man. I so was. you had the I leadership was. role, you know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> and I remember yeah. you played first. Shout out to 98. Yeah, shout out to 98. Shout out to 98. They, they were man. tough. <laughs> they were tough. It was, it was, a, it was a raw class. It was, uh, it was Alex and Danielle, yeah. and, Trev- Danielle and Trevor are actually yeah. out here in um, the Los Angeles area now. And uh, okay. so, yes, yeah, so I know that they're joining the alumni association out there. So I'm trying to keep up, catch up with them. And um, but, yeah, man, you guys are great. And and it was just great catching up with you, man. So, you know, we'll be looking for you in the future. And I'm sure that, you know, I'll be talking to you more uh, with Callaway High School and the things that you're doing and keep us abreast of what's going on with you guys so we can highlight what you're doing, man. Most definitely, man. And shout out to you, too, man, for making this thing happen and, Shout out to 97 for making us the the men and young ladies that we were. And, you know, all these days, man, if it hadn't been for 97, we wouldn't be here. So shout out to 97. I'm busted. I know, man. And it's funny because 90, well, I was about to say something about 99. But, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was to have 97 and 98. I mean, you know, wow. You know, God bless them. But, you know, that's another story. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, bro. All right, man. We're good catching up with you, man. All right, later. Yeah. All right, we're back live, and it was uh, good catching up with Curtis. We really want to thank him for his time for the interview. It was uh, really cool to catch up with him, and I'm sure that Callaway is in the mix right now in the football season, so you guys in the Jackson area, go check them out. It was also their first interview 
first interview we played on the air with our new application that we're using to record our interviews called Call Graph. Sounds uh, a lot better than my 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 microphone angled down at your Radio Shack computer speakers, you know, for my interview. And a lot of times in the past, I'm sure, you know, it sounded like that. But we're going to keep for- pushing forward to that in the future. I have a couple more interviews left to play with that old sound. But this was the first one that we tried with the application. And it creates the files for me without the, without all the hassle. So we hope you enjoyed that interview. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor or a patron to the Marching Podcast Network, please contact the show and we'll give you the contact uh well I'm sorry, we'll give you the criteria so we can start to pub your business using our platform. We will play your commercial, we will post our post your information on our blog, and we will help send out your information through social media. So contact us so we can help build your business. Again, we're you're welcome to call in during the commercial break before we sign off for the night. Having an anniversary party, birthday party, or better yet, you're about to marry that special someone? Liquid Effects Photography is the perfect choice to immortalize all your most special moments. With 10 years of dependable professional service that can deliver from the conventional to the best in cutting-edge technology and creativity. Come experience the uniqueness of Liquid Effects Photography. We serve the entire upper Midwest and will travel further upon request. Come check us out at liquideffects.com. That's L-I-Q-U-I-D-E-F-F-E-X.com. Or call us at 773-454-5556. That's 773-454-5556. Do you know where to find scholarship information and other financial resources that are available to HBCU students? Are you up to date on the latest information in the HBCU world? If you answer no to any of these questions, then HBCU News with the Reads is the place for you. We provide information to spark interest, success stories of graduates, and the latest on issues that you care about. So check out HBCU News with the Reads, Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern on blogtalkradio.com forward slash marching podcast. Check out our website and point your browser toward hbcunews.net and join in on the calls and discussion today. Attention high school directors and alumni. Does your band need to raise money to travel, buy instruments, or uniforms? Are you looking to raise money to help your band? Well, Big Deal Fundraising is rapidly becoming one of the largest distributors of fundraising products in the industry. Big Deal is based in New York City and ships anywhere in the United States. Offering quality products, fast delivery, and innovative consultation that will help you meet your fundraising goals. Call today at 855-244-4430 or visit us at BigDealFundraisingUSA.com. Big Deal Fundraising, your fundraising partner for your band or music ensemble. What if there was a Facebook for bands? Wait a minute, there is. Bandhead.org. Bandhead.org is a social network for HBCU show bands. You can create your own profile and post videos, photos, and comments on Bandhead.org. Need somewhere to post events, audition schedules, job postings? Check out Bandhead.org. Are you recruiting for talent? Go to Bandhead.org. And coming this fall, HBCUBands.com. Write that down, HBCUBands.com. Block Band is a minority-owned music business that you can think of as your assistant band director. We help grow your musicians with a great selection of traditional concert band music. Then we back up their performance with necessities like reeds, oil, drum heads, drumsticks, and mallets. Finally, we outfit your players in auxiliary and shoes, spats, and gloves that match our precise custom drills. Got band? If so, then Block Band's got you. Check blockbandmusic.com or call us at 919-698-2560. That's blockbandmusic.com, 919-698-2560. Are you ready for this year's College Battle of the Bands? Well, look no further than the 90 Degree Show, brought to you by the Marching Podcast. Every Sunday during the college football season at 8 p.m. Eastern, we recap the most intriguing battles of the weekend and give you, the listener, an opportunity to voice your opinion on the battle by calling into the show and talking with our panelists. Check us out on Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern at blogtalkradio.com slash marching podcast. The 90 Degree Show, the world's first and only interactive HBCU band podcast show. 
All right, that's all the time we have for the interview, and I don't see any calls lighting up, so that's all the time we have for the show. Again, we want to thank Mr. Curtis Luckis Jr. for his time. Uh, really good seeing him uh, doing well, and I hope that everybody out there is checking out what, what Callaway is doing, and I'm sure that they're doing good things, good positive things, and I'm really proud of you, Trump Funk. So uh, go ahead and check out the website, donate what's in your heart to TheMarchingPodcast.com, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Thanks to you for listening, and remember, the eye is a better pupil and more willing than the ear. Advice may be misleading, but examples are always clear. See you next time.